Am I even capable of remembering of... Oh, I, don't be afraid, we're not alone. This is the mirror of your soul. Damn it! Let me guide you to an ancient time, an era nobody can see it, at the frontier of our... God damn it, too fast! Okay, the distant of a great family. Okay, stop. Hey, pause. Text speeds, but the... But does the text speed actually influence text here or only in the previous dialogues? Let's see. Uh, okay. The descendant. Okay, I can actually click right now. So it can stay like that. Mm, the descendant of a great family from Mauritania. The princess was uh, wise, as wise as beautiful. With her first for justice and strong personality, she was soon handed the reins of the country. Her wealth came from a magical donkey. She had inherited from her ancestors. The animal could make gold and jewels at will that she collected to erect roads and buildings which would serve the interest of her people. Under her reign, works of art and wolf of all sorts were developing, and her people lived without ever having to fear hunger since she always found a solution do i need to actually loot for loot look for the red color right now the attention she had for her people as well as the vast power her wealth gave her made the young princess hugely respected across the country and everybody praised her i guess that's uh, that fairy tale she's talking about right now you know, i mean less right God seemed keen on satisfying her in turn. The princess indeed fell deeply in love with a young, inexperienced, by honest noble, who had eyes for nobody else. He was from a famous family of twelve sons, and since he was one of the last born, he lacked attention and so desired to settle himself far from them so he could write his own tale. She gave him love and respect, and he asked for no more. From their marriage, a daughter was born, and she was already on the path to being as wise and brave as her mother. Year after year, the king and the queen ruled together as fairly as possible. The magical donkey from which came their wealth was treated well, and the couple's life seemed perfectly desirable. A magical atmosphere hung over the realm, and there were rumors the queen had to be part fairy to win success in everything she was doing. Okay. I don't know that story, to be honest. Thus, no other country looked more like a fertile than this one. Or I just don't remember that one. We'll see. As the couple were enjoying their life, full of ideas to make their country a better place, misfortune eventually struck. Yeah. It had to. The queen, who everyone thought invulnerable, fell critically ill. Even though the king called the best physicians in the world, nobody was able to find a cure to the sickness which was devouring the queen from the inside. No, I, def I, I still think I don't know that one after all. Days passed, citizens were getting more and more restless, and the family were depressed, but to no avail. Realizing she was going to draw her last brief, the queen called her husband next to her deathbed. She was still young and she would have gladly kept working on all major undertaken projects. But she was even more remorseful for leaving her husband and her daughter so soon, as she loved the both of them so tenderly. So many things to do, so many memories to have, so many beautiful moments to live. Alas, pain was carving a deep chasm into her breast. As the king leaned over her, stretching a hand towards her, with the saddest look he ever had, she was trying to tell him her last wills. Her face partially paralyzed and ridden with painful spasms, the queen exhaled excruciating moans. My dear, this is the end for me. Hush. Don't say anything. Don't wear yourself out. I still believe. 
I have got to believe. We'll find a cure and you will be better soon. I promise. It is hopeless. I know this. No. I cannot believe it. Before I depart, I would like. I would like you to do something for me. I love you, you know it. And I love the young princess too. I cannot stand imagining you crying over my death for too long. I want you to be happy above all. What are you to say, trying to say, my dear? I know how you are. You will not be able to accept my death. You have always searched for my eyes, for my attention. I already know all too well how sad you will be. But you will not be able to mow more my death until the end of time. I would rather follow in the death, in the death, in death, than live without you, my lady. How silly of you. The kingdom needs you. Our daughter needs you. Don't leave them behind. Even for my sake. But I... Sooner or later, you will have to overcome my death. Plums. Sooner or later, you will join her as well, after all. Weird thing to say, right? But... Yeah, I know, I know. I want you to leave, my beloved. I want you to leave. For me. I will never stop thinking about you. Then please, allow me to request something of you. I insist that you remarry. Find someone who will make you happy again. Someone able to take my place by the people. By our daughter. The princess. Okay, that's a weird request to be honest. I mean, I understand. Live on, right? And try to not f mm, get pissed for all the times that she died and so on, but remarry. Well, that might not be easy, but we'll see. But I cannot do this. Nobody will ever replace you in my heart. I know it is painful. It is painful for me as well. Deep inside, I feel so angry imagining you in the arms of somebody else. But I am not selfish. I want you to be happy, above anything else. If I am not here anymore, I want for at least a woman as wise as me to know how to heal your heart. This is my last wish. How could I fulfill such a cruel request? You are the, on the one my heart craves. The only one. The queen laughed sadly. Fever was causing her excruciating pain. Soon it was near impossible for her to talk. Her eyes were getting more and more obfuscated, to the point that she was unable to make out her husband's grieving face as, she, as he cried beside her. Stretching a hand toward him, towards the light, she tried to rub, tried rubbing his cheek one last time. Regretful. She could not help but suddenly shed some tears. The aging was becoming so intense, she was losing her touch with reality. My fate is such a cruel one. I only want to live by your side, to bask in your innocent smile, for all eternity. Yet I have to go, that is God's will. I do not want to. Of course I do not, it is too soon, there are still so many things I have to do here. It is too late, however. I cannot do anything but face it. The mere idea of being replaced is harrowing. To imagine someone else living in my quarters, ordering my retainers, settling in my home. To think about someone else in your arms, embracing you, kissing you, giving you new hairs. To think about someone else getting the affection of my daughter, attending her wedding, raising and supporting her. Okay, so I guess that daughter is really young if you are talking about raising her. Huh. It is making me die inside. Jealousy is eating what remains of me. I would rather still be here. I would rather have lived 
those beautiful days forever. Eh, days forever. But it is impossible. Therefore, even if it pains me, even if the fault is un the fault is unbearable, you must find happiness. You must forget me. Okay. Why must he forget? I don't think he must forget in order to find happiness. But that's just my fault. Or more like my belief, right? And that is so painful to me. He probably thought I would face death with dignity, stoic and calm. That is how people see me. However, I'm only human after all. I wish I had been more real writers. But through this pain that is stirring my body to dust, all that remains are regrets. Oh, oh, oh. Should I look for the red color now? Thus, they bid far a tearful farewell to each other. Some time later, the queen died in unbearable suffering, and the king was inconsolable. As sensitive and deeply in love he as he was, he deemed that no girl from any good family could rival his late wife. He refused to remarry and swore to never change his mind. The whole kingdom was mourning the death of its queen. One of the greatest ceremonies ever made was organized in her honor. It went on for, for <clears throat> it went on for several days and nights. Whether farmer or merchant, rich or poor, each citizen took part in the funeral. They decorated, they decorated the city with lanterns in several places. Some water lanterns were even put on the great lake for her sake. All night the candles could be seen all the way from the Lord's castle. The young princess, as sorrowful as her father, found comfort in admiring those lights. Those flickering lights looked like spots of hope to her. However, the country seemed to be consumed by a steadfast evil, harbinger of storms. Thus, things would never be the same again. As the years passed by, the kingdom slowly... What was that sound? Eh, never mind. As the years passed by, the kingdom slowly declined. Since his wife's death, the king had lost any hint of motivation and could not bring himself to do anything. Wow. He cancelled all the current great works the country was working on, thinking they had all lost meaning without her, and he locked himself up in stillness and silence. Wow. Give me a sec. <laughs> the citizens felt neither heard nor supported, and discontent was growing. Yet the king did not care, it almost seemed like he was trying to be hated by his people. Really man, really? Not good, not good. All the magical donkey was keeping the kingdom from going bankrupt. However, the inevitable happened. The donkey's fame went beyond the kingdoms, borders, and several neighboring and well-seeking lords tried to invade the lands, leaving them scared by wars. The once lively castle was now a shadow of its former self. Artists and merchants were fleeing one after another, looking for more auspicious lands. The people had lost all faith in their lord. At first, the king's apathy and inexperience were convenient for the nobles. Ha! Huh. Since he was handling the country rather poorly and was showing no sign of resistance, opportunist consular took advantage of this to seize control of the realm and get richer behind his back. Oh. However, the decadent mood was not so convenient anymore. After some time, but wasn't already too late, the council realized that there was nothing to be expected from the current king, who had become impassive. They had to do something fast, for the greater good. What about the princess? Can't she take over? Factions appeared. Some thought the king could still take care of the realm until the princess wedding with whom would become the new king. 
others hope for the princess to seize the throne earlier than expected. Well, I would try to actually lead to that, while some others advise the king to find a new wife who could revive his will, or even that he go back to his homeland and leave the country with a new government. The most extremist nobles had no problem suggesting taking care of the king once and for all, but that last opinion would not satisfy anyone. I still they should try to get the princess to take over the kingdom now. They all lived in the wake of the previous queen and they all wanted to honor her memory, but no one seemed to understand what she had been trying to build. Because of those long struggles, the king was asked day after day to find a new wife. However, he was still obstinately refusing to do so. His most faithful counselors were growing desperate. But your excellency, the whole kingdom's fate is at stake. You cannot remain impassive while some are scheming. Oh my god, they're just a shadow over here. But I thought I saw the red color for a second, you know, that I was supposed to observe. Uh, for death or your replacement? Exactly, your lack of action is folly. Are you twins? You must choose someone to live by your side, to put an end to those complaints waving on your shoulders. I do not care. Let them kill me if this is what they want. To follow my queen is my only wish. You cannot say that, Your Excellency. The Queen had always thought of the Kingdom's best interests. If you give up the realm, you betray her memory. So be it. If you do not wish to manage the Kingdom, then why do you keep this masquerade going? You should have married the Princess much earlier. Think of your daughter. It is time for her to see something else. My daughter. The Princess may hate me for all I care. My whole Kingdom too. Nobody will ever be as great as my departed wife. But my lord! Enough. I don't want to see you anymore from today. Be gone. Leave me alone. <sighs> Horrified, the counselors could feel the kingdom's ruin looking. Looming, sorry. While some were already planning coup d'etat, and struggling with one another to say some arbitrary wrong, the loyalists thought they had to find some way to pierce through the king's walls. To get a better understanding of the king's psyche, they called an old druid. Go and try to convince the king to find a wife. We're all ready to. We are ready to do anything to make him change his mind, regardless of who would be the wife we choose. Do not worry, sirs, and sit by. The druid, dishonest but quite crafty, was peerless when it came to influence the human soul. As soon as he appeared before the Goom King, he made a great impression by the mysterious look he had perfected. Your Highness, your cousins are inviting me here today because they worry about your health. Speak freely, what is waving on your heart? The death of my wife, of course. I've lost and desire to live since she died in my arms. I cannot see nor hear. I keep on brooding over her past, again and again. Understand, the Queen's ghost still haunts you and you are a prisoner of the past. Yet, could this spell be broken? Your wish for the good of the kingdom, yes? Of course, I wanted to follow through with her work, I wanted to be strong. But I let myself be shot away by time and decay. It is far too late now. If I may, I think there is a solution. You have to find a woman able to become the new queen. No one can do it. I've taken a look at the portraits of all the neighboring girls from good families who were ready to be wed. They have been sent to me, all of them. There is not a single woman with her qualities. Wait a second. Wait a second. But you are talking only about her looks. Right now. I mean, I quite understand that, you know, because people always, uh, how do you say that? Well, the first thing people notice is the looks, right? 
and a lot of times they judge by that but but dude you have to think about the inside maybe she would be a great queen maybe she has such great personality as well so dude <sighs> well okay let's try to persuade him Yet you did not wish to meet with any of them. Why not give them a chance to show you who they are? It doesn't matter. I already know it. Wow. Could be that you are taking the queen's last wish to heart and you are on the way to farm and fun and she was. Beauty is indeed enjoyable, but I do not really care about it. I'll ask her to be wise, smart and righteous. Okay. Your words are not basically working with what you're doing. Really? How can you say someone is not wise, not smart, or not righteous from a damn portrait? <sighs> aristocrats, aristocrats. Are you looking for someone who shares her traits? Right on the spot. The king stood still, given the awkward silence that Ruid knew he was right. The king did not want just any princess, he wanted someone who seemed like he's the party one as much as possible. If there were a Moorish prince, would you consider marrying her? Maybe. Then your highness, I know only one such person. Our one righteous and wise princess who looks exactly like our departed queen. Druid. Druid, you are not such a stick. Incest here, right? You are not su suggesting that, I hope. Tell me you are not suggesting that. She lives near you at the moment. He's suggesting that. And who might she be? I brought her of her with me. I think he's the only one you did not glance at. Really? Why would my consulars hide the mysterious princess from me? See for yourself. The ambitious druid handed the portrait to the aging king. He grabbed it and paced up and down across the room in a revealing silence. She's magnificent. This face, this skin, this expression. She's lovely. And you are telling me that she is wise and righteous. Absolutely, your highness. She has received only best location. I recognize those signs. I could swear I'm looking at my wife. How is this possible? Who is this foreign girl? She is Princess Kiana, your daughter, your majesty. <laughs> oh my god, I can't believe this. <sighs> oh my god. <laughs> I did see that coming. I did see that coming. But it's still a bit surprising. I still can't believe he actually decided to suggest that. But on the other hand, on the other hand, it's trauma and expansion. So something like that can be expected. Right? Ah, learning from experience. Okay. Let's go. My daughter! For a split second, the king was shocked. The pressure had taken hold him, of him to the point of cutting him off from reality. To be honest, he had refused to see his daughter since the queen's funeral because her mere presence reminded him of those beautiful days forever lost. He did not even know what she looked like or what kind of woman she had become. All of a sudden, he felt shameful. Are you making a fool of me, Druid? Are you, marry, are you telling me to marry my own daughter? Admittedly, it must sound rather extreme, but think about it, your, your Highness. Is there someone else who could look more like your departed wife than her? Dude, it's incest. It's sick. Is it not troubling? I would even say it is a gift from God.
Okay, let's continue. I... No, I... No, I... I won't say anything about that. <sighs> uh, that's a weird grief from God. I mean... God suggesting incest, that's... That's not good. But, sure, draw it. Okay. A div divine gift, you say? Princess Kanda looks too much like her departed mother for it to be more coincidence. A mere coincidence. This is God's will. The queen's soul did not go to heaven. It settled in that younger tailor made body. She's simply waiting for you to find her, my lord. Do not miss this chance. Second chance. Confused by the old red silver tongued words, the king hesitated and eventually sent the man away, claiming he would think about it. But the seed had already been planted, weakened by his unstable state. The king was already struggling not to, completely, to not completely succumb to despair. The flickering hope the swindling druid had brought to him was enough to make the king fall into darkness. Little by little, over the curse of the more and more frequent visits from the man who would become his confidant, the king started to give in to the idea. I definitely don't know that story, by the way. Right now I'm sure of that. The druid had a way of implying that the young princess was actually the reincarnation of her mother, and that she surpassed her in everything, so much that the impressionable king eventually believed him. This new obsession was the only thing which was keeping him alive from this point forward. And thus it was not long before he did the unforgivable. Oh, 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 oh. Can we do something around? Later? That morning, a sweet sand hung in the castle's corridors. The azure sky hinted at the beautiful spring day ahead. In the feeble light illuminating a four-poster bed, a silhouette was quietly moaning. All of a sudden, a hurried footsteps could be heard. Nearby, at the door was slammed. Open, a breathless young, young retainer entered the suit. Princess, it is time to wake up! A muffled groan was the only answer. I would love to let you sleep, but can't do so, unfortunately. Don't forget that your private tutor has scheduled a lesson for this morning. They figured move laboriously. I didn't pay attention to the crystal. Is that you, Nahima? Close, princess. I'm the one waking up in the morning. Now, please make haste with getting out of bed. We need to perform your toilet. Without a word, the young girl stood up and let her maid guide her. Through precise and vigorous gestures, the retainer made her take a bath and then took care of dressing her. Nothing, okay. Uh, okay. Just as the retainer was going to brush her hair, Kiona seemed to finally get out of the... Of, <clears throat> get out of her torpor. What is that flower scent that has been tickling my nose since this morning? It must be Verbenas, Princess, it is the season, after all. Verbenas are quite exquisite flowers, do you not think? All those colors? Maybe. Well, as you are not fully awake yet, your lesson is going to start soon, you know. Don't worry about me, Nihime. I'm quite positive the poor son will be late again anyway. Princess, you should not speak ill of your tutor. He's an excellent teacher. What has been done for today? I do not know. We have completely given up on arithmetic over the past couple of days, and we are now focusing on practicing singing and playing the harp. You are only studying music? Why this sudden change? It is a request from my father, so or so it seems. I don't know why I have not seen him for years. I thought he had more interest in me. I'm sure the king is simply a bit shy, for he can't get on his high horse. He may not even dare to be near you after your mother's death. I think he resents me. And why would that be? One way or another, he must be ashamed of me. He surely had some mistress all the while and soon. He will tell me that he wants to repudiate me. 
that would not be correct of him. In that case, why has he not tried to marry me off? I'm 17 years old, is it not unusual? I do like the freedom, but I cannot shake the feeling that this is a bad moment. After all, young girls from good families are wed between 12 and 14 years old. Okay, this is different times. That's how it was, Links. That's how it was. I know you consider it weird, but that's how it was. I'm getting old, and at this rate nobody will ever want to marry me. For me, you are still too young. With a lovely face like yours, perfect the thought, you're as beautiful as an angel princess. And smart at that, no prince should ever refuse your hand. Thank you, Nahima. It is nice of you to comfort me. You know I mean it. Look at this beautiful hair. I could brush it for hours without getting bored. Kiona gave a faint but tender smile. Nahima had been her retainer, her personal assistant. And her, con <clears throat> and her confident for many years now. For many, many years. Now, as far as she could remember, they had been inseparable. Older by only two years, Nakima happened to share the hair races Mauritian origins. However, unlike Kiona's family, which had always consisted of famous nobles, Nakima's humbler family had settled in the region as a family of retainers. I still don't pay attention to the crystal, god damn it. That's not good. The late queen herself had trusted the young Mauritian servant and that was how she became the princess's escort despite her humble origins. She was now greatly enjoying taking care of the princess and the sudden death of the king of the queen had only brought them closer. It was without a doubt Nahima's optimism and kindness, which were allowing Kiona to live a comfortable life, despite the grim state of the country. Between the lessons intended to hone her knowledge, and the time spent with her retainer, the hers was not, lo not lacking in anything. Yet she was feeling deeply bored, and to her dismay, no party could have ever awakened the sleeping castle. If things keep going like this, I'm going to die of old age. When these walls, she thought, a bit melancholic, no one will ever look for me. No one will ever come to save me. And I will end up alone in this depressing place. She did not want to show Nahima her anguish, so she tried her best to smile. With the buffing done, the two girls left the room to attend to their occupations. Once the servant was out of sight, the princess sighed. Even though Nahima was her confidant and she trusted her, there was one thing Kiona had never told her. Oh, I wonder what. What might be the trouble? Something was troubling her. She sometimes felt like she was being watched, especially on a day like this one. <sighs> so the king became the stalker. Am I right? As the weather was sunny, her tutor enjoyed it. her to go to the palace's inner garden to begin her recital, 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 recital. And as she gazed for, uh, where did the gaze came from right now? I don't know. Guess I'm getting a little sleepy. What time is it? By? Uh, 2.38, so yeah, that would explain my mistakes. And as she had foreseen, the princess felt someone insistently looking at her as she was singing, a gaze that was coming from the king's cabinet. I knew it. As usual, the king was observing his daughter from afar, staring at her with a desire that was not hidden anymore. The old druid had grinned him down and now the king was a desperate, as desperate as he was convinced. Yet, to marry her. The day his counselors had gathered at his request, he was going to inform them of this decision. The mood was heavy, everyone felt something major was about to happen, and they were as worried as they were eager to hear what the king had to say. Thank you all for coming. 
As you know, many of you have been begging me to remarry. Until now, I was quite against it as if I wanted to keep that promise I made to my late wife. However, I finally have found someone worthy of replacing her and sitting beside me on the throne. A round of applause filled the room. The counselor seemed both incredulous and ecstatic. Thank you for making the decision, your highness. You may have thought of us. Insensitive, but we were only doing it for the sake of the kingdoms. Absolutely, and we are sure the woman you have chosen will be up to the task. Again, are you twins? Could you tell us who the lady who managed to entice you might be? Of course, I will not hide the truth for much longer. She whom my heart has chosen is Princess Kiona, and I her be hereby officially announced my decision to marry her. In a short movement of fear, all the counselors fell silent. Some thought they had misheard, others that it was a misunderstanding. One brave soul decided to break the ice and shine asked, Princess Kiona, your daughter! And the look on his face was basically telling, What is wrong with you, dude? My daughter, indeed. That's sick. Loud whispers then filled the king's cabinet. A mix of horror and bewilderment could be seen on the faces of the nobles. Time seemed to have stopped and the cheerings had been replaced by contempt and cold glares. Another counselor dared to speak. But your highness, with all due respect, you cannot marry your own daughter. The church says... Did you not swear a few seconds ago to accept my choice, whatever it would be? Are you never satisfied? I am finally fulfilling your wish, and this is still not enough. You rascals! Be gone! And no, I will not change my mind. I propose to kill not this very day. Thus, the counselors were chased like criminals from the king's cabinet. Gathered in the corridor, they soon began arguing aloud, exposed to all the retainers who were passing by. The king has gone crazy. He had warned you. We should have gotten rid of him. Actually, we had warned you. You fools! This is your fault! The druid you paid so charms is a sham! He put some devilish thoughts into his head! Look at the result! It is just sleight of hand. By marrying the princess, he's trying to keep the kingdom under his yoke. Once when the king goes to. Once the wedding ring is consummated, we'll not be able to exile him anymore. There will be able to allow with Kiona to take back power. We hide his mercy. Yeah. It is which the third one? Third one, okay. The counselor really are like counselors actually are like huge family. And it's, yeah, it is still possible to point an assassin. And enough! It's because of you extremists that we are in this bind. Really, if your scammers have managed to come to an agreement, maybe we would not be here. Us are not the ones who let the tree do as he pleases. Let us face the fact: you loyalists are at fault. They soon came to blows, and the news quickly spread like wildfire. In the whole castle, 